hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's been forever i know i know i know i know i keep promising i keep promising oh i'm back for real this time oh i'm back for real this time this so this time i won't promise this time i won't promise that i'm back for for true but i will try to be consistent in my own way so how was your valentine's how have you <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not laughing because probably you're heartbroken. I'm only laughing because I may be the one who's heartbroken. Who knows? <laughs> First of all, bear with me. I am having a very bad cold, hence the hot water. I'm having a very bad cold. Where? I thought it's sunny, but what is Homer? It's seated on me. Eh? it has seated on me like i don't know what where they could buy any anyway we're gonna push through because homer got nothing on us cheers cheers to hot water first of all we are born again so here we are with water no more drinking alcohol on this channel <laughs> so guys um i won't give you much detail i'll first go straight to the point where have i been no, I wish to sing a song for you guys. Oh, that song. Hey, to my day one babies. I'm going to give you some loving, loving, loving. <laughs> oh my God. It's been so long. <laughs> it's been so long. Next time, I promise you, I promise you, I will sing the song for you. So shout out to Fabian Niels, first of all. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Period. Where have I been? I have just been here. Um, I needed to take a healthy break from social media. I really needed to just find myself. Eh. Found myself and find really what I wanted to do. Uh, in in those months, I kept saying, "Oh, I want to rebrand. I want to change my name into something else. I want to change who I am. I want." To... And there was just so much that was going on that, uh, concerning uh, my my content creation life, and so I just had to pray about it. And I just told God, "God, you know what? Just direct me. Just direct me." because i'm stressed i'm stressed i'm stressed i thought of going off social media and never coming back but then i was like mm, no sometimes you see you have to look at some of the things that god has given you and you're like um it's not a joke you know god gave me these platforms for a reason he gave me the followers for a reason he gave me you guys you my lovely lovely day one babies new subscribers you subscribers for a reason and the fact that i'm born again now it's only right that i share what god has done for me and definitely i know and i know for sure that it will benefit someone it will impact someone's life and so today the video of today he's my testimony my testimony my testimony um there was a video i wanted to do about how for myself in lgbtq and everything and everything so this is gonna be more of my testimony concerning that life and you know whatever god desires so this story begins around um after i left the church that's around 2020 Where? helicopter <laughs> So around 2020, after I had left the church, got myself into another relationship. But this time, I wasn't really in the relationship because of how I was in love. Remember, I had just been heartbroken in the church by a man from the church. So this was more of a, a rebound kind of situation. And so it went on from... I had left the church around July, I don't, I don't know, July, August. Then around October, I got myself into this situation. And then... It went on through to 2021 um now around feb now this is where the story of how i got myself in lgbtq began so around feb 2021 so around october 2020 around november 2020 there was an event somewhere and then i went um when i went to the event i met someone when i met some i had been seeing them on social media but we have we had never met in person so finally we meet in person they're all good vibes we became friends so i'm gonna name this person um oh we're born again now so no naming them machetani names <laughs> so we're gonna name them plate so i met someone called plate when i met plate um we became friends we hang out we hang out that we hang out hey we hung out that day 
um I'm watching too many movies sorry <laughs> we hang out that day we, ha we hang out that day and then <laughs> we became friends so the next time i spoke to plate was around no i'm feb come feb remember i'm in a relationship me i'm cool i'm just moving my on with my life so so plate calls me around kind of feb uh beginning of feb or something then they were like, hey, niage babes. I'm like, boa, eh, unai shingi wapi? I was like, ah, naishi place fulani. They were like, ah, can we come over? We have drinks. I have my friends. I mm -hmm. just want a place to chill. I was like, ah, yeah, cool. So I had just moved into a new house. So I was like, ah, let's enjoy like, like a housewarming or something. So they came through. We chilled that night. And then, I don't know how. I don't, make it make sense. Let the math math for you. But for me, it didn't. It has never. It will never. But this, here I am. Uh, there's this chick they came with in a plate. We're gonna call her. We're gonna call her um, carpet. No, mat. So this chick called mat. They came with in a plate. Uh, we were chilling. Eh, my whole kitchen is here. We were chilling, and then tell me how I got myself into a relationship with someone I met that day, and I don't know how that happened. Let's be honest and, and very very clear. Chicks have moments, especially during uh, drunk nights and all that. Chicks have moments. Uh, you find yourself you know doing things this is just me saying this because it's it happens um then it has happened to me before so but for christian chicks we don't do that nah, mm -mm. it's only chicks in the world who do that all right <laughs> so i got myself into a relationship that night with this chick now matt i don't know how I, I met her that day i had never seen her in my life before but here i am i'm in a relationship another relationship and I already have a boyfriend, mind you. Oh my god, it's so sad. So um, now, the, me and the following day, these people are gonna leave. Me, me, me. Everyone else left except Matt. Matt quamed in my house for a week or two. Then she left, went back to her place, her place. <laughs> then came back the same day and told me, "Hey, by the way, you know me and uh, Plate have cosanad." was plate yeah me and plate have cosana do you know we usually live together now with cosana i don't know what to do can you just like host me for a few t for a few days uh before we solve things and then i'll be able to go back to my house i was like cool no problem hey before i know it guys it's months and months down the line anyway i won't go into details because uh it's not important this is just my testimony um, so that's how I found myself now in a permanent relationship, living with this person in my house uh, for a good kind of eight months. So now, uh, where is this story going? So, um, yes, something like that. So again, when me, I'm dating someone, I don't, I'm not the kind of person who has doubt. Me, I don't have trust issues. But then me, I got trust issues. I don't know if that, now that's a red flag, but I, I never have trust issues. Is that a red flag? Me when I, I'm dating someone, I, I'll hardly ever doubt you unless you give me a reason to. But I'll hardly ever doubt you. Now I think where the suspicion now started was around now August. Um, this person started hanging out with an chick. Um, we're gonna call her Dish. You no, know, we've had Dish before on this channel. Cap. So started hanging out with Cap. I had known Cap before. So now my girlfriend. Is, what? Bambi Nimbaya. <laughs> now, uh, Matt started hanging out with 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 uh, with Cap. You're bumping. I started hanging out with Cap, and I was like, "Hey, when do you and Cap have a thing?" She was like, "Ah, no, we don't have a thing. We're just friends." I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." But then, throughout the relationship, relationship, she had been like praising Cap. You know how you see someone on social media like, "Hey, by the Cap is hot. Hey, by the Cap kuam supu. By the ni kashika Cap ivi." You know those things people say. Which are very absurd to say in a relationship. You don't say that to the person you're dating. You don't see another person and you say, Hey, that person, hey, come shika. Like, bro, we live in the same Nairobi. You will most likely meet this person. So, when I saw them hang out together, I was like, mm, Okay. But I didn't take, give it much thought. Then, one of my friends, who is also one of their friends, came and told me, Hey, Bernard, are you still together with Matt? I mean, I was like, Hey, we're cool. Then my friend tells me, hey, But last night, they were with Cap, and the things they were doing... I she wasn't acting like someone who is in a relationship. Where? My friend. So there was a confrontation. I asked them what had happened. They denied it. I don't know us, we are just friends. I probably it, it was just a drunk moment. I'm like, so if you are saying 
you did it because you are drunk. It means every time you're drunk, you'll be doing something like that. Ama. Anyway, that's not the story. So now, now that's when the story started escalating. Now that's when the scandal comes in. When now things got really, really bad. And there were insults and really bad insults, guys. If I was to say some of those things here, you would wonder how I'm still alive. And I've not committed suicide. <laughs> But it was really, really toxic, really, really bad. So it led now to the scandal that happened. Now, this is where the story, my testimony, officially begins. Oh, abstizig, abstizig. Hey, this homer. So um, this is now where my testimony begins. Now, the scandal happens. I wake up at home. Um, my family is there with me, and I'm like, Kwani, what's going on? And then I, I wake up and I remember bits and bits of everything because I, I was literally high the whole time. So I wake up and I'm remembering bits and bits of everything. I'm like, ay, 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 when what happened? I go on social media. I ask my mother for my phone. At first she was like, no. Then I was like, just give me the phone. I check the phone and I'm like, why is everyone talking about me? Why is the world on my case? <laughs> Now it hit me, oh my god, I had gone live, I had done this, I had said things, I had da, 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 da. and I immediately, do you know my mind shifted to God? Immediately. I had not spoken to God for months. I had been so bitter with God for such a long time. If you ever listen to my video, it, it's definitely here on my channel. If you ever listen to my video of why I left the church, I was so bitter with God. I had never, I had not spoken to God in a long time. And immediately I remember I broke down and I asked God, god what have i done what have i done to you what have i done to myself to my family now it started hitting me that it's not only about me there's this thing people usually say of i don't owe anyone anything honestly at that point i realized it wasn't about me i had a family i had myself i had god i had back, a background that god i had a reputation i had a brand that i had built for eight years bro it was bad it hit me and immediately i broke down into tears i'm the kind of person who i have grown up in the church my grandparents introduced me to god when i was very young very very young i first got born again first got born, i got born again when i was 12 years old so i'm first i'm someone who has grown up in the church deeply so this was a moment in my walk with god that I realized I have fallen and I have fallen deeply, God. I have fallen and I have fallen deeply. And this is crazy. And in that moment, I was scared. I was scared and I was just repentant. My heart was crying out to God. I was just crying out to God. And every, every time I would pray, I'd say, God, Aki, I repent. I repent, God. I, I don't know how I got here. I don't know how this is my life. Where? god forgive me and i remember making a prayer and i told god god you have found me before you are the one who found me in the first place you will find me again i told god just find me find me because i am lost i don't know who i am i don't recognize myself just find me god and i'm telling you um salvation is a journey of sanctification it's sanctification my friends it's not you don't just say that you forgive me and you're forgiven and that's it okay it depends but for me, it was God had to sanctify me. I had to go through sanctification, serious sanctification. And this is now where I fell to alcoholism and depression. My, at this point, I've gone back to my house and all that. And, and I prayed for weeks. I remember I prayed for, for a few weeks. And then all of a sudden, psh, I was in, I've fallen, I've, I'd fallen into alcoholism and to depression. I used to, I used to cut my hand. Like, I think, I don't know if maybe you guys can see. So... That's when I fall into depression and to alcoholism. A good one. Not really a jokes, jokes, a good one. I was drinking cheap alcohol, like, I don't know. I used to drink daily. Guys, when I mean daily, I mean daily. Like, I think every time I would wake up and it hits me that I have wronged God, I've wronged my family, I'm, I'm ashamed, I've lost everything, bro. I would just prefer drinking. So... Oh, I skipped a part. So after the scandal had happened, let me tell you something. As a brand, the first thing that you know is coming, be ready, is brands you're working with to drop you. Just be ready for that one. As a brand, be ready for that. 
So immediately uh, I got off phone calls from all the brands I was working with. Every job I had, they were like, bro, we can't work with you because I we feel like, you know, of course they're very kind. They're like, oh, we've seen you're going through something personal and right now we can't associate ourselves with your brand for obvious reasons, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, okay, it's cool. I, I, I had accepted my fate at that point. So now look at me, I've lost everything. So this is me who has been bitter with God for months, for actually a year plus now. Yeah, I've not spoken to God for a year. I'm bitter, bitter, ilembaya. So every time I would remember that, I have been denying God. I've been saying I don't know God. I have been, you know, acting funny. I couldn't bear the struggle. And this is something that I've now come to learn um, over time now that I'm working with God. The fact that most people, you listen to most people who have a history, who, ha who hate God. Let me say hate God or uh, um, deny God or say there's no God or something like that. You will realize they have a history with God. Most most people who will say there is no God, they have a history with God. Ningumu sana mtu ajai experience God to just come up and say, by the way, there's no God. If there was a God, no, no, no. If you listen, if you check closely, you realize they have a history with God. Why? Um, maybe something happened along the way and they were mad at God. And now they use that bit. It's like it's like a bitter ex. You know what I'm saying? It's like a bitter ex who is always talking trash about their ex because they are bitter. It's the same thing when people talk trash about God. They're like, oh, there's no God, by the way. There's no God. <laughs> Bro, why do you think there's no God? Because you've had an experience with him and something happened and you were heartbroken and now you're the bitter ex. Period. That's just it. So... Um, that was me in that moment realizing I had been the bitter ex with God and now I had to deny him just to make myself feel better and now I have to I've fallen into drinking just to cover up that shame and most of us people who um, refuse or deny God it's because we are scared of facing the sorrow of God the sorrow of sin because let me tell you something this, uh, when you realize you have sinned I don't know if there's, there's somewhere Jeremiah realized he had done something and he talks about how the sorrow of God really dawned down on him. And it happens every time, even as a Christian, you sin. When you sin, yeah, repentance is not always cute. Let me tell you something. I'm just telling you this for free. Repentance is not cute. At least, oh God, I repent for my sins. You think it's that cute and you walk away, bro. No, you have to face it. You have to go through the sorrow of God. And that's, not easy and i think most of the people who dodge repentance and rededicating their lives to christ and stuff like that are uh, mostly they are trying to escape the sorrow of god and i think that's what i was escaping as well because every time i would be sober it would hit me i've wronged god and the moment and i'm almost crying then i realize mm, why don't i take a few shots i end up drinking now i looked at the situation i said uh you know I have to convince myself that I am this person I said I was. I've already done a live video. I've embarrassed myself. I've embarrassed my family. I've told the world that I am gay. So how do I live with this? By convincing myself that I am gay. And showing the, the world that I didn't make a mistake. So me, let me tell you something. There's a, there's a, pre there's a pressure. There's pressure. There's pressure that comes with social media. <clears throat> there's a pressure. For example... Someone who's been showing you guys they have money and they are rich and they have everything and they can do anything. Even if money is her or his rich lifestyle, they will try to keep up with that rich lifestyle so that you guys don't say, hey, Kwani Alisota, you get what I'm saying? So I had already said, I'm gay, I'm gay. The best thing to do at this point was to convince the world that I was indeed gay. I knew what I was saying. I wasn't drunk. And by convincing the world, I was convincing myself. So I had to convince myself that indeed I was gay. And that was it. Knowing deep down I wasn't. <sighs> Again, being someone who's grown up in the church, I knew this was a sin from the word go. And let me just put a disclaimer before we go. And the last time I gave a testimony about this, people twisted my words and said, Oh, kumbe iki tu muna kwanga kujekelea. This is my story. I want to put a disclaimer. This is my testimony. I'm not speaking for anyone. I'm not speaking for a community. I'm speaking for myself. This is my story as a Christian. 
as someone who has worked with God over for over 13 years, this is my story. Period. Yes, so here I am. Matt has come back, said, oh, you know, I'm sorry, let's... I was like, ah, yeah, cool, let's do it. Because I wanted to still convince myself that I was indeed gay. And so, um, of course, now I was working the homosexual life. I was working in drinking. I was periodically, correctly, deeply, swimming deep end, walking in sin. Yani, chubui, Indian Ocean, katikati, walking in sin. I was deep in sin. And all this was to prove a lifestyle to the world. All this was to prove that I was this person. Because I didn't want to look confused and lost to the world. Yet, I was losing myself. I was living a life to prove to the world. You see, every day I would wake up and post a glass. Ah, to do a lock. Do you do what? Do you what? Do you what? Do something to show the world that I was really living a life. But in secret, I was losing myself. I was losing myself even if i would get something small to do i will hardly do it because i've been drinking i have a hangover i can't do anything you end up losing money at this point i don't have an income at this point i don't have anything to back me up in this life but let me tell you something about god i'm telling you i was in the ocean deep in sin but god still commanded the heavens to provide for me i can tell you for sure i never went a day hungry i never went a day without paying my rent i never went a, i don't even know how but looking at looking back at it now i'm like god you are still with me even when i thought i was running away from you like even when i thought i was you know me and god were like you know when I was denying God and saying, me see, I'm in God anymore. God was still commanding heavens to, to provide for me. I don't know how that is possible, but bro. So now this is 2021, around December. This relationship was just toxic. I'm drinking every day. They are drinking every day. There are fights every day. It got physical. The only things were just bad. When I say bad, I mean bad. So you go to a place, this person is not providing for anything. They're just, they're draining me and just taking me down that road of depression. Hey, I remember even thinking I should enroll to a mental hospital because I really thought I was crazy. This person had manipulated me to a place. I really thought I was, I thought I was nuts. And so I was like, I'm going to leave you with my house. And then I'm going to enroll to a mental hospital. Hey. When I got to that place, a friend of mine asked me, Brenda, are you serious? How much have you given into this place, even into this scene, that you even think you're sick? No, it's not possible. I packed this person's things. I kicked them out of my house. I was like, it's time. I'm done. I need to clean up. I need to clean myself up. I need to. I don't want to be a junkie. I need to clean myself up. So I cleaned myself. I kicked this person out. That was the end of it. Excuse me. That was the end of it. Now this is the kind of December ish. At the end of December ish. Sorry. So January comes. My life became became a bit stable. I can't say it was stable, but it became a bit stable. I started cleaning myself up. I'm still drinking, but the depression has gone down because the, my main source of depression is gone. So it, at this point, I'm a bit stable ish. Okay, much better, but I'm still drinking. And a lot of drinking moving on and now it's having people over to over, over to my house we are drinking every day people people i don't even know come into my house yani you, you, you invite one person they come with five people random strangers you guys are just drinking engaging in so, all sorts of things just messed a messed up life guys when i say messed up i mean messed up yani i would come here and do a youtube video hi guys oh my god i'm so good i'm okay i'm happy i wasn't happy for a day i wasn't i wasn't happy for a day the one i can tell you for free i was i think and this happens to most people i'm not again speaking for anyone i'm gonna speak for myself but um it's because it's something i've seen it happens with most people whereby we want to live a lifestyle we want to prove that we are living a lifestyle Yet we are dying inside. It, it, that was me. I was trying to live a life, but I was dying inside. I was literally killing myself every single day. I was killing myself every single day. 
but trying to keep up and look cool and look okay and look normal and then i got to a place and this whole homosexual thing it wasn't for me i could not pretend anymore it wasn't for me so i kept living this miserable life i i got myself into addictions that i'm not even ready to share yet but when i'm ready i will share i got myself into addictions um crazy crazy addictions and so um i got to a place and i got fed up i got to a place and i was fed up i remember um it started i was sharing this with someone recently it started um oh my god bear with me this home whew. it started um with me feeling i don't want to, to drink anymore um, of course, I had people who were praying for me. My family was constantly praying for me. And I remember even my, my mother telling me, oh, we've been praying for you with Kinaguka and all that. And I'd be like, you know. And so this whole time, <laughs> I don't want to face God. I don't want to face the sorrow of my sin. I was not ready to face the sorrow of my sin. So it started with mean feeling, I don't want to drink. My best friend can attest. Prishon, you know this is true. I started even telling her, babe, I'm scared to And she was like, by the way, I you know. And I was just like, oh, maybe it's a thing. Maybe you get somewhere and you're like, mm, maybe it's a thing. I remember I even made a post on Instagram and I said, is it just me or is everyone's social batteries going down? And clearly it was just me. <laughs> and I was like, I think my social batteries are just going down. Maybe I've partied so much. This is around now, Kendo, May, June. This is around June. Me, I just thought, mm, I mean, maybe it's just me. Maybe I have partied so much that maybe I'm just tired of partying. Maybe that's just it. And not knowing this was now God really finding me. I was literally going through sanctification this whole time without my knowledge. I thought, ah, me and God are cool. See, me, I repented. Ah, me and God are cool. See, after the scandal, I said, I'm sorry, Ama. See, sorry, Alicia. And Kumbe, I'm still going through uh, sanctification. Oh, I remember now the last time I went to a club. It was around June. I was hosting at a certain club. And I remember that night, I never drank anything. I think I only took like one shot. And that whole night, I drank soda. And I was just, I, I, I don't want to drink. I just don't want to. And I remember I went and I shared with someone. And I told them, I feel like I don't want to be going out or drinking. And they were like, ah, please, we die, Brenda. Don't, don't do this yourself. Don't just stop because at now, if you is, don't just do, don't make rational decisions based on probably a, a, a temporary feeling. And I told him, no, I really feel like I, I am done. I really feel so. Now this is June. Um, July... I think I, 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 I drank like twice. I don't know. I bought, I remember I bought a bottle of wine from my house and I was just looking at it like, do I really need to drink it? Do I need to drink it? Hmm? Finally, I drank it, but then, yeah. So come around August, um, around August now last year, I got on my Instagram and I came across a certain page of an old friend, an old, old friend of mine. She's now living in the States. I remember I texted her and I just started reminding her of how she, we used to pray together during missions, uh, 2018, Nauko, and I and just reminded, I was like, Manze, you used to pray for me and all that stuff. And I just don't know how, but I just thought of reminding you that you really impacted my life. I don't know why I'm talking about prayer at this point. Immediately she told me, can I call you on WhatsApp? I was like, yes, please call. She called me and she was like, so we, I usually have a group. We spoke for a while, catching up. Where have you been? How have you been? Funniest thing, this friend of mine didn't even know what I had been in a scandal. She had no idea there was anything like that. Hey, God is good. <laughs> so she told me, I better usually have a Bible study group. Would you like to join tonight? And I was like, yeah, I'll join. And then I was like, mm -hmm, I won't join. Then around, now that we went, we spoke for our, for hours. Then Johnny that same day, I don't know, this is kind of 6th of August. Um, that Johnny, she called me. She was like, ah, hi, hi, dear. Uh, we are entering the, the, the Bible study. Entering to Nangia. The Bible study is starting in a few minutes. Um, please join. Uh, you don't have to say anything. Just join and mute. And then 
no one is gonna ask you anything just join and mute just join mute and just listen in okay i was like sour no problem when the host who was hosting that day said oh i can see a new name who is this person i was like bro i wasn't supposed to say nothing i was supposed to be quiet <laughs> but then i was like then they're like just unmute say hi to us just say your name and where you are from because the, the group has people from all over the world. Just say where you are from and just tell us your name and just say hi. I unmuted. Guys, when I tell you, I could not speak. I could not speak. I was even telling a friend and she was laughing because where well, the presence of God can be overwhelming. I could not speak. I was, I could almost say hi. <laughs> And I would break down. And I would cry. And in that moment, I'm telling you, it felt like someone was rubbing on my shoulders. And it was just, you know, that relaxing feeling of, it's like someone assuring you I'm here. And I was just alone in my house. But literally, I could feel my shoulders being relaxed and the assurance that God was there with me. And I tried speaking and I could not speak. I was just crying and crying. And in the background, I could just hear these people praying for me. And they were just praying and praying and praying. Oh, my God. And I composed myself. And then the host is just so kind. She was just like, no, no, mama, it's okay. Just compose yourself. We are here. There's, don't worry. We are, we are here for you. And then I composed myself. I took my time, honey. And finally, I spoke. Hi, everyone. My name is Brenda. And it, I remember saying, I don't even know why I'm here. I'm such a sinner. I don't even deserve to be here. But all I know is I want Jesus. I just want Jesus. I have been walking in sin. I have been doing all sorts of things. I just want to get born again. This was not supposed to be emotional, was it? And I remember that's all I said. And I just broke down. And everyone was just saying, Amen, Amen. And they were just praying. And I remember Pasi, Pastor Fidel. Pastor Fidel just prayed for me. And he told me, I'll call you after the Bible study. And then we're going to talk. And I said, okay. Finished the Bible study. Pasi called me. And then he asked me, you want to get one again? I said, yes. So we prayed on the phone. And that's the night I dedicated my life to Christ. 6th or 7th of August, 2022. And that's where the journey began. Again, sanctification. I remember when I did that, immediately I felt disconnected from the world. I felt I was being called to a place of... Mm, God was calling me to a place of silence. And I remember I went MIA on social media. If you, if you follow me closely, you know that. I went MIA on social media for days. For, I think for a good second or three months. I think I came back to social media around October. From August. I went off social media. And every day I was just listening to God. Learning from God. Hearing from God. And around October, God was like, you have to testify. Now, I remember when I got born again. Um, now this is now August. I remember telling God, God, teach me to love the things that you love and to hate the things that you hate. And I can't tell you that all those addictions I was dealing with, they left immediately. At now I got one again tonight. And then tomorrow I was like, addiction free. No, there's nothing like that. I still struggled with those addictions. I think the last addiction I conquered around November. Around November. I, there are those I cut quickly. There are those that are like uh, drinking. For example, drinking. I, I had withdrawals. Yes, I had withdrawal syndrome and all that. But it wasn't that bad. But the addictions I had, I kicked most, most. I think the last addiction that had really, really gotten to me. I finished really gonga yamusho around October. And uh, October is when I said, ah, man, enough is enough. I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. No. You see, I'm still born again. I'm still working with God faithfully and diligently. But I was still fighting addiction. I was still fighting addiction. So I think my encouragement is that when you get born again and you fall, don't don't um, don't dwell on the falling. You know, receive forgiveness. It's freely given. 
when Christ died on the cross and he said it is finished, he really, really meant that. And it is finished. I was just reading the other day um, and, and, and I was reading that when he said it is finished, he meant paid in full. It is finished simply means paid in full. Every sin, everything that you have done, every guilt, every pain, every struggle, he has already paid for it in full. When they pierced him, when they, they, they mocked him, when he suffered on that cross, everything that you feel guilty about, he paid for it in full. You don't have to carry that burden. You don't have to carry that pain. You don't have to carry that struggle. He, ha he already carried it on the cross. When they mocked him on the cross, they were mocking you, but he took that for you on your behalf. I didn't, mean, I didn't intend to preach, but I'm preaching. <laughs> he carried that for you. When that pain you were supposed to feel, he felt it going through his hands and his legs. Everything, the, thorn, the, the, the crown of thorns, it was supposed to be you who would have carried that, but he did that for you. He paid it in full. So every time you fall, don't dwell on it. Accept your forgiveness. Say, yes, I have fallen. Lord, I have fallen. It's not what I desired, but I accept my forgiveness. This sin won't fall on me. It won't carry me back to where the enemy was taking me because grace has taken that place. I'm walking with Christ now. Accept your forgiveness. Stand up and walk. Stand up and walk. <sighs> anyway, that was me at that point. And now that's me conquering addictions and i've been walking with god diligently i can say i've been walking with god since august in may and i've seen god working through my heart working through my character working through my life in ways that guys i can't even explain i can't sit here and put those things into words god has worked on me in ways that i don't know how to explain it and Around January um, last month, I found myself in a situation whereby, um, I won't give details definitely, but I was in this place, a very good place, and all of a sudden, things were cut short. Immediate, like, heavy belly we expect. And I'm telling you, when things were cut short, I thought I would die. I thought this was the end of the road for me. I thought I was doomed, and I knew now, Nimesha. But I'm telling you, immediately I got the news that this was not going to be happening anymore. Do you know what I did? The first song that came to my mind was Refiner by Maverick City. I thought, Refiner. I had always been so scared of even listening to that song. I could not face that song because how do you say I want to be tried by fire? Ah, are you nerds? Are you on drugs? Imagine I listened to that song for the first time. I broke down, I, I, I nilikad jangusha kwa floor, and I began to pray, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I'm telling you, I've realized how much God has been working on my heart, how much God has been working on me. I'm telling you, that thing was supposed to break me. Normally, I would be having a mzinga. I'd be having a mzinga drinking myself to death because I'm frustrated. I would be seated here and telling God, you're such a bad God. What kind of a God are you? You're not even fair enough. You're not a good father. I hate you. But I'm telling you, I was thankful. I fell into thanksgiving. And guys, I don't know how, but God has been working on my character. He's been working on me deeply and deeply and deeply in ways that I was telling you, the thing in January was meant to break me. It was meant to destroy me and finish me. And normally, I was even telling God, I remember telling God in that moment that um, if that was me in 2021, I know myself, I'm crazy. I am I'm nuts. <laughs> I am crazy. I would have done crazy things, psychotic things, my friend. But God has been working on my character. And what I'm telling you guys is this. And I want to encourage someone who has been debating. Should I get born again? Should I not? Should I get born again? Should I not? I'm going to tell you this. Um, when you get born again, it doesn't mean that now you are walking in the land of milk and honey. It doesn't mean that now your life is perfect and everything is going to work out and now all your problems are going to be solved. 
automatically your bills are going to be paid money will be flowing from heaven like manna that's not what being born again means it means that even through those things that you go through even through the storm even through the pain you will have christ and you will have peace that surpasses human understanding and i can tell you that's what i've been walking in and for example in that situation in january there was someone in who was involved in the situation and they were really trying to put me down they yani they were hell bent on making sure that i was destroyed and every time they would say something i would just hit them with it is well i think it is well god is god is in control and they would wonder how are you not broken madam how are, how is it that you're not broken how is it that you are okay like this and i'm telling you i realized how much god is working on me in that moment recently of course i've been struggling with a few things here and there you know still trying to find a job now you know coming back to content creation i think you guys have seen i've even done um even come back with making content with fiki and all that stuff and it's not been easy as well you know trying to come back to an industry where you are gone for days it's not also easy and there are, there are questions of is everything going to work out does this even make any sense you know who am i going to impact and and the enemy is very skinny i was even telling sharing with my bible study group telling them you know sometimes we tend to think the devil is this guy with seven heads and nine tails and he looks like a dinosaur or something like that whereas the devil is that small voice that you hear in your head you know tell asking you unafikiria wata kusikiza unafikiria content yako itabamba oh yeah wasi walisha kusahau you know there are all those things that happen for me it may be my content creation journey for you it could be something else you know for you it could be i don't know whatever and then there's that and the the, the enemy is just there whispering oh yeah you really think you can make it you really think it's possible and i'm telling you the bible says everything is possible with christ and that you can do all things through christ who strengthens you this is my testimony guys that i didn't walk myself out of sin i didn't one day wake up and say oh, oh i'm so tired of this sin i can't do it anymore <laughs> i went to god as i was broken as i was messed up as i was and i was willing to change that's the first thing i've been with people who say oh i want to live this lifestyle i want to change my life but they're still defending whatever they are doing and that prayer of telling god help me to love the things that you love and to hate the things that you hate i'm telling you that's a very powerful prayer because god will do it and uh, this morning i think today in the morning i woke up a friend of mine told me that hey by the way brenda thank you for that prayer you taught me of telling god to help you hate the things he hates and i love the things that he loves and, I, and and he really did he listened to me and immediately i thought god why do you listen to those kind of prayers and sometimes people pray for something like god give me a car and they wait for 10 years and i think god gave me a revelation that sometimes we are praying for the wrong thing because this is gonna be this is gonna be a bit deep for y'all but it's, it's cool you see before we have gifts before god gives us gifts whether they are spiritual gifts or physical gifts um we have an identity and our identity now this is me speaking as a christian and our identity is sons of god before we are given anything we are sons of god let me give you let me let me simplify this because i'm realizing i'm coming up the prophet as you know what i'm saying <laughs> um it's like you being a child of your mother before your mother gave you any gifts before your mother did anything for you you were first his her daughter or her son you were first that is the first and foremost most important thing wewe ni mtoto wake before akupatie hiyo bike yenye ulipewa ukiwa number 1 before akupatie chakula before akupatie, the first identity is you are your mother's child or your father's child the same thing that happens with god before god gives us anything we are his children and the most important thing that god can give you is working on your character is working on you as a person is working on you so you will realize that prayers that involve god working on you they they 
they get answered very fast. They, because that's the most important thing in the end. And that's why even the Bible in Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added before he gives you that car, before he gives you that home, before he gives you a wife, before he gives you a husband and a child. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And when you're seeking the kingdom and, and the righteousness of God, you know, the first thing he will do, he will be working on your character. He will be working on you as a person. And that's one revelation that I've come to find. And when I, and I, I, I got that one, I was like, mind blown, my friend, mind blown. God is really working on your character. He's just as interested in your character as he's interested in blessing you with all the good things. All the good things belong to us who believe in him. All the good things belong to us, man. So before you ask for a car, ask that God works on your character. Excuse me. You don't want to be given a car and then you'll be insulting everyone on the road. You get a car and you'll be hungering every cop on the road. <laughs> Once God has worked on your character, even when you get that car, you will be the kindest driver on that road. God is interested in your character as much as he's interested in you enjoying the good things of life so make sure that you have wisdom we're going for that anyone who's debating on getting born again or not getting born again i would tell you it is the best decision you'll ever make in your life it is the best decision you will ever make in your life man you would be your world could be crashing and you're just telling god thank you everything would be going haywire the first thing you will say is thank you god thank you you will be carrying a very heavy burden and the first thing you will say is god thank you for using me as a vessel to carry this burden thank you that it is me who is carrying this burden you know right now guys i look back at all that i've gone through all that i've faced even my entire life leave alone the, the last two years but even my entire life and the first thing i say is Thank you that I was that warrior. Thank you that, God, you trusted me enough that would, I would come out victorious. There are things I've gone through, and I'm telling God, there are things I've gone through, God, that I know if someone else went through them, they would not have come out alive. But who is God? He chose me. He knew Brenda would carry this, and she would walk out of that place victorious. And I'm be I believe in you. I, I really believe in you. If you have been debating on whether to give your life to Christ, whether to change your lifestyle, maybe it's homosexuality you're struggling with, whether it's drinking, whether it's whatever it is that you're struggling with, whether it's sex addiction, whether it's whatever it is that you're struggling with, God is able to transform. He's able to transform your heart. He loves you beyond your sin. Don't come to God and feel hata nikubali. Na imimi na izi dhambi zangu zote hata nikubali. If God saved Brenda after everything, man, after everything, he's able to do the same for you. And I'm encouraging you and I'm praying for you and I love you and I'm here to tell you that God loves you just as much. He loves you just as much and he is willing. Imagine he's willing. His hands are open for you and waiting for you to come home to him and say, Father, I am broken, but I come as I am. Find me. Find my heart. A God who can leave the 99 to go and find one. Isn't that even absurd to think about it? It's not even making sense. It's, it's a crazy concept, but imagine that is what he does. He will at Afrika Mahali, I realized by this, nilikuwa na 99, nilikuwa na 100 sheep, moja haiko. He leaves this 99. He goes to find that one. And he brings him or her home. And that could be you, the lost sheep. And God is willing to leave the 99 and come find you and bring you home. And I'm encouraging you. God loves you. It doesn't matter where you are in life. It does not matter how deep you think you are in that sin. He's willing and he's willing to clean you, to cleanse you, to purify you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Come home. Come home. Come home. I feel so <laughs> I feel so emotional. I'm almost crying, but I don't want to cry. God loves you. He really, really, really does. He really, really, really does. I hope you are ready to enjoy the goodness that comes with knowing God and loving God. Um, that's it for me. That's it for me. That is my testimony, guys. 
that is my testimony that is my story that is who i am that is where i am right now walking and obeying god in diligence and in you know what i'm saying so thank you so much guys for watching i hope this video has impacted someone's life i hope this message has blessed someone's life i'm really looking forward to seeing where this youtube thing takes me but be sure to you will be experiencing more like more of these videos whereby i'll be just encouraging you and telling you something that god has done for me and i hope that it will impact you and make your walk even better with christ i love you god loves you bye see you next time i have i have indeed forgotten how to do youtube i just wanted to tell you please subscribe just just subscribe please like this video make sure you share this video with your friends please make sure you share it as wide and as a wide as a cross what am, what's that english share it as much as you can make sure it impacts someone's life as it has i'm sure it has impacted your life so make sure that you impact a friend as well bless someone with this video comment down below please tell me what you would want me to say to talk to you guys about more and more um please comment down below share this video as much as you can god bless you i will see you next time bye